Insights. I'm Eric. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to be talking about the grain markets and soybeans in particular. I think the action, uh, the shorter term action within soybeans is driving this. Um, I think people are getting confused by the rallies in corn and wheat and why soybeans has not come along for the ride. It Technically, it, it has enough energy to do it, but it, it's it's still not there. So we're going to do a short review here. I've got a report on wheat and uh, soybeans out there for the much more in technical setups um, and much more detailed in terms of the energy build. I'm going to show a few things. We're going to talk about grains in general. I'm going to keep this one short enough. I, if you guys are looking for more information, uh, I consider uh, buying the soybeans and wheat uh, reports. They're much more detailed. They look at versions of the matrix that aren't being presented here today. And it is a different perspective. Um, the conclusions that I had come up with were, in, in some of those were that the, the markets are going to move in a relative basis and it's not going to be led by necessarily what people think. And usually the majority is wrong in terms of not only timing, but in selection and biases. The markets that are going to step forward into the lead aren't going to be what was leading in the past. So let's really focus on just the shorter term and and, and just talk about uh, soybeans a bit here. We can see that the evolution of the trade, which is here, and you can study this and read the links and read how, the, learn the different phases within the movement of the, it's a trading investing discipline. We can see that the corn and soybeans and wheat all flipped about 15 months ago. It's produced varying returns from 50 to 30%. Soybeans used to be the dominant leader, and now it's fallen off. And uh, a long time ago, I said wheat was going to play catch up, and that's what it's doing. I wouldn't be surprised if that continues, and that corn, which is currently the leader, loses that leadership, and something else takes over. But again, I'm not going to talk about that in this review. What we were going to focus on is we're going to focus on the energy builds within uh, build within soybeans, uh, the the trends that are taking place and and what are the possibilities at least shorter term that we're missing out i mean everyone believes the corn market and the beans and wheat can all go higher indefinitely but there are some risks and there's some risks forming and the fact that soybeans is not participating it could be a warning and it's something that we're going to have to keep an eye on so let's head off to the the the, the, the tab here and we're going to look at the bar charts and we're going to see there's soybeans. This is what's tracked inside the matrix, corn and wheat. These are the ETNs. And you can clearly see that soybeans is underperforming. It's much easier to see when you scroll through them. Wheat has been the relative performer, and that's no accident. We talked about that in the wheat report, and I can leave that link under these, this video if you guys want to follow that. Uh, there's more going on than just a short-term trend there as well. Uh, but we can see that soybeans is generating slightly lower lows, um, the energy uh, or the volume, which I, in this case, energy is a little bit different, but force behind those trends is might be picking up. So we are making slightly lower lows and lower highs. So it's not super encouraging. I put this big arrow here to reflect uh, the day of Tuesday, which the COT report is going to be collected. So what will be interesting is how energy responds to this day. This is going to be included inside the next energy build, which will be reported on Friday. And I think this is going to be important. Is energy going to uh, decline into this uh, short blip rally? And is it enough to trigger an escape out of this pattern? Or will we roll over again? If energy starts to uh, um, dissipate from a high, and we can see it down here, here's the energy build for uh, the grains market. This is the composite grains DI. Energy build for soybeans is here at 0, 0.78 and 72, which is an extremely high reading. But if it starts to dissipate as price really either goes sideways or starts to tail off, it's a warning that the energy build is not enough to trigger a bullish outcome. And so when we look at that, I'm going to look here at the grains and frame that within the composite grains DI. This is the one that you have access to down inside the matrix. It's right down here, and I believe it's in the major composites. It's right here. You click this link, and you're going to get this chart up right here. I'm going to narrow that down for this review. I'm going to show only the bulls only. Again, it's the same numbers, but we have the it's the highlights here that we're focusing on. And we pull these uh, white highlight boxes represents bullish energy builds. Some of them are short and trigger rallies. 
this one appears to be a short one and, and people are assuming it's going to trigger a rally and I'm under the assumption that it's still going to do that. But there are possible outcomes where if we don't clear and break away and create some what you, maybe a trading flag type of formation that you could get a longer box and, and it slides down. And this is where we have to understand and see energy. As we slide down a price and we have a white box, we have a white box here, but back in 2000 and Eight, and, even, and this is a different point in the cycle, but if this is a possibility, what I'm going to show you is how a, a setup with energy doesn't affect price immediately and how this could decline potentially. It may not be a completely high probability outcome, but it also can cause prices to drop lower from here before we have the appropriate energy build. This, yellow, this uh, white box uh, started you know, roughly about Oh, I'd have to go look at the exact date, probably maybe August or September, and it's expanding, it's expanding to the right. What's, is it going to be a short one or is it going to be a long one of which price continues to slide? And, and if you look at this is corn, this is wheat, or this is soybeans, and this is wheat, it, it, is soybeans pulling down and kind of not obeying the rest of them because it's going into a deeper correction, or is it just going to get pulled up? And, and yesterday, it was the beginning of a trigger that breaks the pattern. And, and what you're going to probably see here is some type of head and shoulders bottom before this moves again. And that's what you're going to keep an eye on. But what we want to do is we want to guard against the potential for this energy build to be a lot longer duration event than it's uh, being advertised right here. It could be a long box and a long box here, and which prices drop and kind of have to make a, a lower bottom or a double bottom at much lower prices. If we narrow this down to uh, energy build, which I talk about more in the reports, and I'm just going to throw this out quickly for this review. If we adjust it, and I can highlight these a little bit better, this adjusts the energy builds for power, we can see that there's a possibility that this setup is similar to 2008. It could be, and these are all possible. Again, I'm not expecting that as long as wheat and corn are rallying. Eventually, it's going to pull soybeans higher. But if the whole complex would roll over, what would do that? I, that's a good question, other than the fact that maybe a rally and then a dollar, which people are continuing to deny even at this uh, even at this stage. It's hard to get people to recognize that it's even starting to move. Um, perhaps that knocks the whole complex down further. If that would... If it would do that, how is it going to look? It's You're going to have a, a, a spike formation here, a spike formation here, but we're going to drag an arrow down and we're going to drag an arrow down. And it's not going to have a price effect. And see, this is the warning that I'm, we have on soybeans already. The, the daily trend is down right here. The weekly trend is down, even though we're showing a slight bullish divergence. And the, the monthly trend is up. But to get this back even into a play in the evolution of the trade, you're going to want to have the three time frames agree. You're going to have the daily go back up, and then the weekly is going to have to go back up. It's going to take a lot of work to do that. If it doesn't have the energy, and if it's not up to the task, what could happen is, is this could easily roll over again and produce a steeper decline and a longer, wider uh, white box here, which will mirror the setup that looks like this. And you'll get multiple uh, peaks here, one, two, maybe by the time you get the third one, is, and it's right about here, that's what bottoms the price. But if you're buying way up here under the assumption that the energy build is going to flip the daily and weekly before it does do that, you're taking on enormous risk. So I wouldn't be rushing to do anything like that. Again, this is an energy build that I follow inside the reports more than I do inside the regular traditional matrix and reviews. But it will be something that I will be talking about when I adjust those uh, reports later in the year if necessary. And we'll probably figure out something that comes into 2022. But these are things that you have to be aware of. So in terms of uh, uh, really the setup in, in this shorter review that we're doing, soybeans is out of alignment. It's not in triple up like corn and wheat are. It's showing compression, which is right here. It's getting compressed. Those numbers are dropping. Price is a bit high, but volume is compressed. It's it's not overwhelming, but the concern that we have is the two time frames are down, and these need to go back up to reestablish the composite trend. And I wouldn't force it just because the energy build is bullish. 
The energy bills have been bullish before, and they have been bullish for a long They were bullish here across all three asset classes, and it can cause the price to still decline. Now, ultimately, these builds, which you can refine them even further than this, and I do do that, and I'm not going to do that here, it will put a floor in the price eventually, but you can lose a lot of money by buying against a, a daily and weekly downside alignment, waiting for the trend to the composite trend to realign again and waiting for the entire complex to turn up. So be patient and understand that this energy build is not necessarily something that's going to flip the trend in your favor. Again, if you want to keep up to date with this stuff, the soybeans and wheat report, I haven't done a corn one yet, but there's a reason why I do these things. There's a lot of information that's out there and reports uh, taps into some of that. I can't do that many reports because I just don't have the time, but it is something that once it's done, I can tap uh, inside uh, my perspective a little bit more than just the reviews. And, uh, you know, these reviews get complicated enough. So, but if it, this is something you're really serious about, the reports are definitely something to consider. So if you have any questions uh, about what we're talked about here, the beans or corn and wheat, any of these setups, any energy builds, uh, what can take place, let us know. If not, thanks for watching the review and we'll talk to you guys later in the week.